Today, I'm making a home for my new lychee gecko using Philippe Habitat. Man, nobody got time for that. Don't worry, I got this. Leap. Ooh, look at it. It looks sexy. Look at that printing on it. Now I'm gonna place a piece of cork bark on the right side and screw it in with some sheet metal screws. Then I'm gonna place some more cork bark over here on the lower left side and then screw it back in. And then next I'll be using some expanding foam to help hold it in better and I add some attention to detail a little later. Then I'm gonna apply some expanding foam behind this back pocket here, but watch, I'm gonna do something really cool with it later. Then I add one last cork bark tube, and this is where my gecko's gonna be basking at, near the top. All right, now I'm done with my hardscape, and I'm really loving the way it came out. This is where my gecko's gonna hide inside this log, come in through this side, come out that side, and then bask up here, and then climb up this little tree. And then I remove the top screen lid for the next step. Then I'm going to carve out all the smooth surfaces of the expanding foam so I can apply silicone in my media to it next. 30 minutes later. Ugh. And you know, at this point, I was just cleaning up, feeling all good inside, and then I started looking inside the closure and noticed something awful. The expanding foam started peeling off the sides of the wall. One of the worst things ever that can happen to a build. And I didn't really think about it at first, but since this is a new cage and it's made out of coroplast, it just doesn't stick very well to the sides of the wall at all. And at this point, I thought I totally failed, but then the idea came to me. I crumbled up a piece of napkin and inserted it into the small gaps all behind the walls. Then I lightly apply expanding foam to all the sides of the walls that had gaps. The napkin was there so the expanding foam doesn't fall behind the wall and push it out further. Instead, now it'll just stay there. And now you're like, hey, why are you using expanding foam again if this is what got you here in the first place? Well, now this time that I'm not using it as recklessly, I'm gonna carve out the trimmings a little bit and then I'm gonna silicone the sides and this is what's gonna make it hold still just right. Then I apply brown silicone and I really like brown silicone because then it just covers up any inconsistency when applying the media. Then I spread it around like I'm frosting a cake and get it nice and thick, like chocolate cake, thick. Then I sprinkle orchid bark all over the silicone. I really think this will give the gecko some nice texture to feel when climbing around. Then I fill in the gaps with a mixture of sand and organic potting soil. This will help blend everything all in nice together. And then I like to pat it down really nice and tight. And as you're doing this process, you only want to work on one section at a time. Otherwise, you're fighting against time with the silicone. All right, guys, it's the next day now. And just look at the way it came out. It just came out so awesome. I really love the orchid bark look, a little bit of sand texture to it. It just has that really nice naturalistic blending look to it instead of coming out of a hard, jaggy edge. So I'm definitely going to do this style more often. But also, I want to mention real quick, when you guys use silicone, a lot of people always ask me like, hey, when do you know it's done curing out? It'll leave a fumy smell. And until that smell goes away, that's when it's done. Sometimes, usually for me, it's about 24 to 48 hours. Some people could be a week or two. It all depends. And for my drainage layer, I'm just gonna be using filter foam. You could use leak of clay pebbles, but I'm optimizing for as light as possible. And I make this one inch thick, and then I cut out a piece of weave fabric, place it in, and then I dump in my homemade terrarium substrate that consists of orchid bark, organic potting soil, sphagnum moss, and a little bit of wash play sand. And I wanna get it up to about four inches deep. All right, so I have one gripe with this so far. I do not like seeing this drainage layer. Even though this screen closes right there, you can still see it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab some weed fabric, cut it out and place it right there, close the door. And then I cut off the excess weed fabric. All right, now to the best part of it all, planting it. And first plant I'm gonna be using is a snake plant and I'm gonna place it right here in the back left corner, right behind the logs. I think it'll fit in perfect right there. You know, I had a couple leaf blades left over and I thought it'd be cool if I placed it right here. Then the next plant I'm gonna be using is called Croton Petra. I think this will make a really good foreground plant and I love the color texture to it. This will just make it pop. I'm gonna place it right there in the front right corner. Then for my next plant, I'll be using a dwarf banana plant called My Little Prince. And this should only get up to two to three feet long. And this is gonna be more of an experimental plant, but I'm gonna place it right here in the front. All right guys, remember that empty pocket over there? I'm gonna stick in some substrate and then I'm gonna put in some pothos and have it hang over here and just give it that jungle look. 
All right, I'm done with planning now, but I'm still not done with this enclosure. I'm gonna add some textured detail by adding Spanish moss around the sides of the logs, as this will just give it that really accenting touch. And now to spruce up the foreground with some leaf litter and botanicals. And a couple magnolia leaves to add some color variation. Then I throw in some various pieces of broken driftwood that should help like give it that forest-like look. And then I'll be using dairy cows that are perfect for a lychee gecko. And now the springtails. Aren't they just gross looking, dude? All right, time to put the lid and door back on. Oh, it's not heavy. Fits like a glove. And this is a lychee gecko that I recently got at an expo from my friend Veronica. And man, I really love the dark look on this gecko and, and the really pretty pink petals on her. It reminds me of that Japanese flower, Sakura. You know what, I'm gonna call her Sakura. I think that's a really fitting name. And also, I wanna mention that this is just a grow out tank till it gets to its full size. But for now, this will do really great for her. And I can't wait to see this all grow out into a nice, beautiful varium. I'm really excited to see this dwarf banana plant grow out. Like, it'll just be really nice and luscious, giving that jungle look. And for my equipment, I'm using an LED lighting called Night Crew. I got this off of Amazon and I use this for all of my bioactive builds and this always grows my plants really great. And I'll leave a link down in the description. And I wanna say that these leak cages, like dude, I am so in love with them. They're super lightweight. They're really easy to work with. Yeah, I did have that hiccup earlier, but hey, it's a new product. You gotta learn how to work with it, right? But yeah, I think these are the future when it comes to reptile keeping, these leak cages. I totally recommend you guys trying one. And also, you guys should check out the expo video that I picked this gecko up. You can watch it right here. My name's Ryan and you're watching Mighty Morphin Reptiles. Peace!